Do you want to bust your sales quota? Do you want to join the ranks of top 1% high-tech sellers? The Top 1% Sellers Factory podcast gives you the insights and the tools to help you achieve your sales greatness. The podcast features sales and services professionals, leaders, and experts to give you the edge you're looking for. Here's your host, Ash Sadiq. Welcome, everyone. This is the Top 1% Sellers Factory podcast. And my guest today, I'm so excited to have him with us. His name is Ayman Sawaf. He's one of the pioneers of emotional intelligence. And I'm just going to take a minute here and actually read for you his bio. He's one of the original creators of the discipline now known as emotional literacy. He's also attributed as an early pioneer in emotional intelligence. And he's the co-creator of four of the four cornerstone cornerstone model and its application of business. Um, he's written the book Emotional EQ with Dr. Robert Cooper, and he has spent the last 16 years building the evolutionary foundation for new systems and industries. And we'll get an opportunity to talk to him today about some of the projects that, that he's doing uh, uh, today. But mostly, most more importantly, what we're, we want to focus on today is how. Emotional intelligence, in Ayman's view, can really help sales professionals become top 1% sellers. We're really going to take a look at how that really gives you an edge. So with that, Ayman, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Wonderful. Great, great to have you. So what I'd love to do is sort of give people maybe an, a historical view on why emotional intelligence or emotional intelligence really got to become something that you looked at and became important to you? Well, you know, I grew up in a, in a quite a wealthy family in Lebanon, amazing parents, highly educated, very secular, lived half my life in Europe. And uh, I had great education. I studied uh, industrial system engineering in Ohio state and I did my business study at IM Day, which, as you know, what used to be Harvard uh, connected. And then I went, I went to the Middle East in the early days of the uh, first boom, first oil boom in the late 70s, yes. where the country was desert. All the Middle East was desert down there, or few buildings and towns. Yes. And I noticed everywhere, when I remember, I said, God, what shall I do now? And God said, go to the light. And the only light I knew were tape and lap and chandeliers. So yes. I, I found there, there was a boom of construction and building and everything. And um, so I, I, I saw everywhere uh, only a, a uh, light, light bulbs hanging from ceilings everywhere. Yes. So I opened the first lighting store thinking that's what God told me to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I, from one to two to 10 to 20, to became the largest wholesaler, to building my own factory in Taiwan, which was before China and Korea. Then I went to Europe and ex- I, I expanded into England and America, selling all kinds of lighting materials wow. and then government contracting. So I was extremely successful. And then what happened, my father, my father died and uh, and uh, and I got depressed, and I went through a divorce, and everything crashed down. Yes. And uh, and I was so disappointed with my life, with myself, and and then once somebody told me about how oh, you need to deal with your emotions. Yes. I said, what does emotions have to do with me? Yes. You know, I just, you know, I I am I'm an engineer. I'm a technology. I'm a businessman. Emotions. You know, but anyway, having nothing to lose, I started dealing with emotion after emotion, doing the technique and the exercises. And my life kept changing to the better. And I became happy. I started playing music. I, I created 12 albums, sold half a million copies. Yeah. I did 30 movies in Hollywood with all the major companies. And, and love in my life came and success back again. And I said, damn, all that because my emotions? Then I understood that emotion is not psychology. It's an electromagnetic energy yeah. that is released from our brain, a source of electricity, power, and magnetism that yeah. attracts to you. you know? yeah. So I thought, wow, how come they never teach us this when we were kids? 
Right. It's only when we don't know how to use emotion, it fires back, it, yes. it blows up, and then we need a psychologist. Yes. Like if you put your finger in a socket and get a, you know, ow, you know, instead of putting the lights on. Yes. So it's how we use that energy. And I thought, God, I thought I was very, very intelligent. And I found out I was really not intelligent at all. It's an amazing so art. Yeah. yeah. So I said, that's it. I'm sorry, I'm lip thing a little bit because I have a tooth. No problem. No problem. <laughs> I just no put in a bit loose. So I said, that's it. Not one child will be left behind. Yeah. That was before George Bush said it. That's right. And, and I decided to bring in emotional education to children. Yes. To make a long story short, I sold my lighting business and I moved to the next octave, the enlightening business. Yes. Instead of lighting people's homes and gardens, yes. I decided to light their hearts and minds. Yes. I thought, well, adults are too screwed up already. They need <laughs> therapy. They need, let's concentrate on a new generation of kids. They yeah. become emotionally intelligent in 10, 20 years' time. Thus, yeah. we'll have culture, education, and so on. Yes. And uh, so I, I moved from England to uh, Middle East, to America, to Los Angeles. And I did the first two movies for children. And then I, I wanted to grow faster because I thought media would be the fastest way to yeah. spread this, yeah. uh, any, anything, yeah. <laughs> including Donald Trump, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I, uh, I, then I uh, bought in a media company by Sherry Duval called Think Entertainment, which okay. was the head of all uh, TV programming. Yes. And I did four TV series uh, with her on HBO, Universal, um, uh, Warner Brothers, and then I created an animation company with Norman Lear. We did a TV series on Warner Brothers. So the idea was to bring emotional education to children through entertainment. Yes. And then on the side, I had a publishing company that published around 30 books. The first curriculum uh, to bring edu emotional literacy, which is a term I coined, into our homes and schools as the antidote yes. for violence and bullying for uh, all those stuff that we spend so much time, money and energy, but didn't go anywhere. Absolutely. And actually we have a campaign uh, starting next week called field.org, which is about no school will be left behind where we get sponsor to sponsor every school in the country to bring them all kind of thousand dollars worth of emotion literacy training and manual and storybooks and we are trying to create a whole movement yeah. uh, around emotion literacy in schools so i went from one to another one and then i needed to raise money for the nonprofit which i started called feel and it didn't work and my fundraiser came said well everybody loved it but they want something more substantial they, they want to know that it is not a new age fad from San Francisco, one of those hippy tippy things. Yes. <laughs> he said, why don't you write a book about emotional intelligence or emotional literacy? Yes. And for the business world, then we'll print 50,000 copies, we'll put them on the desk of every CEO in America, and yeah. then we follow up with fundraising letter and meetings. Oh, that's a great idea. So I found, because I'm, you know, I'm not an author, yes. so I wanted somebody to help me write the book. I found a, a, an incredible, incredible, incredible man called Dr. Robert Cooper. Yes. He's very well known in the personal development and he's the, he was the, 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 the professional coach for people at R, uh, 3M, Arthur Anderson, Motorola, and all those big companies. Executive coach, yeah. So he agreed to write the book with me. And, uh, and then... We were about to release the book called Emotional Intelligence and Leadership and Organization, Executive yeah. EQ. And right away we heard about Daniel Goldman writing a book with the same name, Emotional Intelligence. So I fine-tuned it more towards the business community, yeah. and we created the first emotional intelligence map. We call it the EQ map, like an IQ test. Yes. We measure your emotional intelligence, the different 16 uh, value, yes. and how that correlates with your success in life, your relationship, your health. So if you want to know why your health is down, you just go, and then on the other side, and you see what are, is it trust, is it 
perfection is it? What is the one that is causing that lack of success or lack of health or yeah? Well, yeah. Well, let's let's and, actually, let's capture that moment because maybe when you look at that map and you think about particularly like sales professionals and of course now in a lot of your businesses you were the chief sales officer still until today I know in your in your in your investment company. Um, when you think about that emotional map and you think about the sales profession, what nuggets out of it you, be, you believe a sales profession should really pay attention to, again, from an emotional intelligence standpoint? You know, uh, since that map we did was now 20 years ago, yes. uh, I, I merged the nonprofit with another one that's called sixseconds.org. Yes. They have a lot of program for to bring emotional intelligence to people and organizations they yeah. work from the navy all the way to hilton chains hotel with the salespeople of fedex yes and they have a new developed assessment tools yes you can assess and you can do it online yeah i do not know how where it is but if we, people go to six seconds.org and yeah. look for assessment Wonderful. They see all the different qualities yeah. that you need to instill in you and then measure those. So it could be issues like leadership, like yeah. trust, like uh, uh, building uh, intimacy with the product. Is it uh, uh, self-confidence? Is it whatever yeah. emotional or qualities that needs to be developed? So yeah. once you do the assessment, it guides you into what direction you need to build your emotional intelligence. Because not all of us are bad at everything. Yeah. Some of us are good at one certain area and deficient in certain areas. Yes. So you say that if you concentrate on the top 10, 20%, most likely they are emotionally intelligent enough. They yeah. just need to improve and expand you know, the depth and the height of yeah. their emotional intelligence yes. and open up to using emotions as that electricity, that energy, that passion, and to use attraction, use magnetism. We know we are not only have a physical body, we have an electrical body. Yes. That's why when you go and do a blood test, the first thing they tell you, do the electrolytes test, you yeah. know, all in electricity. And yeah. then we, we are magnetic being, we attract the sales, we attract the people, we attract, you know, through our resonance, they call it, yeah. through your, your energy, through your emotional state. The yeah. more you look happy, joyful, trustworthy, you know, that resonance of attracting the people the same way. Yeah. Emotions are very magnetic. As you know, the saying, fear attracts fear, anger yeah. attracts anger, love attracts love. Yeah. So now, in emotional intelligence, how you project the emotions you want. You can feel them and you can start resonating with them and you start attracting the people's similar resonance. Yes. You know? Yes. So I, in my own way, I close my eyes and I feel joy. I feel uh, whatever I need yes. before I go to a meeting. Yes. You know? I feel a different quality of goodness. Yes. There's many, like there's humility, there's there. So I feel one minute of each one of those emotions. And, and then there's a mix, there is a resonance that is created that attracts to you. Yes. You know, that's the highest use of emotional intelligence called emotional alchemy. Yes. So it starts from I need to know what our emotions are, how to express them, what's the message and the feedback. Because every emotion is coded information. Yes. See, this is how whoever, the universe, communicates with you. Yes. You know, they don't communicate through messages or through emails. Yes. They, they use emotions and imaginations. Yes. And if you are not open to them, then you cannot get the messages, the information you need about what's happening in your reality. Exactly. And what's you respond to, instead of going everywhere, reacting to everything, you know. Now you're working, as they say, smartly. Not yes. working hard, working smart. Exactly. Right? So, so you use your emotion to project the energy that you need, you feel, to attract those reality to you, that sales, that relationship, that business deal. So are you, are you using like a visualization or how do, you, how do you sort of get in that state? What's really happening? 
I do. I use visualization, but it is not important to use visualization. Okay. What you need is to imagine. Yeah. When imagine is like daydreaming. Yes. So I close my eyes and I remember. I feel joy. And how you feel joy is by remembering yeah. something that gave you joy. Because yeah. our brain is more or less a bit stupid. <laughs> Whatever smart they it thinks. Whatever you focus so, on. Exactly. If you think, yeah. close your eyes and think of an orange, your mouth sours. Right? <laughs> you know that feeling. So yeah. you just have to throw a picture or imagine and it reacts. You know? Yeah. So if you imagine, I would always imagine when my publisher called me when the book was released and told me it is a bestseller in Holland and here and there and I, after I hang up, I was so much of such joy. Yes. I, was, I said, we we'll jump on the bed and I started jumping up and down, up and down, screaming <laughs> loud, you know. I that release from my brain secretes joy. Yes. Right? Yes. For, for every emotion, I have a memory that links to it. So, so I have like a memory banks, memory banks, right, that related to emotions. So you don't really have to visualize. You can just imagine and feel. It's feeling. Exactly. Because every time you feel, your brain secretes hormones and, 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 and frequencies, right, that go down through your nervous system, sending information to every part of your body. Well, let's, let's then think about, I mean, definitely this is sort of like the starting point for any person, and especially for a salesperson, given the fact that to your point, they need to come in with a very positive attitude, really create a different energy. The other piece is how do you, as a sales professional, when you think about, again, emotional intelligence and literacy, how do you uncover the emotions of the people that are in that room? You're trying to talk to them about this big, big sale, and you're trying to be conscious of what's going on in their own mind, uh, not just intellectually, but also emotionally, given maybe the risk they're going to take, the commitment they're going to make. That is called empathy. Yes. One of the main things they teach in emotional intelligence, because emotional literacy is about reading and writing, right? That's what literacy is. Yes. And the way you read somebody's emotions, you read their energy, right? You read, it's about empathy. You feel their feelings, right? So it's yes. about learning how to be an empath. Yes. For example, there are some politicians have very, very high empathy. Yes. There are other politicians, and so they, people feel, they think they care. They yeah. understand my problem, you know, and so Very on. Interesting. Yeah. I connected to that. Yeah. Some other they are cold. I don't want to mention politicians, you know, but I don't really care. But yes. you can see a picture of them and say, oh, I can see that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they might be good people and they might be smart. They might be this, this. But they don't, they don't make me feel yummy. You know, they don't make me feel, you know, that I want to talk to them. Yes. So empathy is reading emotion while writing emotion is expressing them properly. Yes. So by reading and writing emotion, when you meet somebody right away, energetically, you say, oh my God, this guy is really ready, really excited, or this guy is hesitant and needs some more work, you know, this guy, I need to come to them gently. Those guys like, you know, like, you know, they, they like tough, you know. So yeah. do you know how to communicate? Yes. You can improve communication. And then, not only you can read their emotions, but according to that reading, right, according to the data, because this is all data. Exactly, data right. Comes in, and now how do you respond to that data? Yes. How do you express, right? And this is not about lying or cheating or manipulating people. Yes. It's actually genuine, real uh, 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 transactions. Yes, exactly. There are something uh, there in the 60s, there were a, the, one of the first personal development program was called Transaction Analysis by you know, the books, series of books called I'm OK, You're OK, and stuff like that. Yes. And what they mentioned is the main thing about this is that everything we do, we are transacting. Yes. We are doing transaction. We are doing business all the time. All the Every time. time I talk to you about something with my smile, with my wink, with my word I use, yeah. I am selling myself. Yes. Right? Yeah. You know, or I'm doing, even what we call it in my latest book, Sacred Commerce, yes. we call it doing your inner commerce. I the see. commerce between you and your beliefs and with your thoughts and your feeling, the choices you make, your attitude. So if you, sit, if you become more conscious of what do I, I want to do 10 more percent more sales. Yes. I want to reach this level. 
But that's my belief system says now that you already you can't do more than that, right? You need to listen to yourself and do business with yourself. With yourself. That's why people tell you sometimes, why don't you leave me alone and go do your own business, right? Yes. You need to go and work with your thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs. Exactly. Yes. Everything is outside transaction or in inner commerce. Your you know, inner transaction. Because right. at Cisco, so I now, think go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So when we do business, you know, I always try to feed the person. That's why I give at least five time minutes before I get into it. Yes. I want to waste five minutes get in that mindset. before yeah. so I can get the data, right? And the way I do that is by telling a story. Yeah. You know, or telling, oh, I just came from a school children, you know, I saw, you know, and, and oh, wow, look at you. You're, you're, I love the way you dress. I love your, oh, you know. So that creates a little dialogue, some kind of feeling and emotion. Yes. And during that, the energies are blending and you yes. start reading somebody's energy. Yes. Right? Yeah. So when we try to just slow down a little bit. Yes. Right? So we yeah. can read. Let me, ask you, let me ask you a question on that. So do you, have you been in a situation where, given the fact that you've read the emotions, you decided that now is not the right time? Absolutely so. Right? Absolutely so. And that's the hardest. Yes. Because you want to do the sale, right? Right, exactly, right. <laughs> so like, by its nature, I'm not going to wait a second. Close the deal now, they tell you, right? right. You know, right. Don't lose a second, otherwise you lose it. You know, you've got one chance. All yeah. of those are belief system. If yeah. you believe you've got one chance, they're going to get one chance. Right. right. And you say opportunity knocks only once. Correct. I say opportunity, if it's yours, knocks once and twice and thrice. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know? So yeah. that's absolutely hard for a sales professional because I think to your point, they usually have a lot of pressure. They want to close the deal sooner than later, and then they want to move on and sort of, you know, close another that, deal. That, that's why car salesmen have the worst reputation, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. right. Because if you're gonna leave here without buying at 99% chance you're not coming back. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but in a corporate situation, there might be a chance to come back when the time is right. And, the and, are right. and yes. that person will trust you. They will feel that you are in integrity with them. Yes. And they, they will come back for sure if they need that product. And yes. they will choose you on others. And they might give you more than what you expect. Because they immediately saw that you're not interested in a transaction. You're interested in what's good for them. Well, for both. It doesn't yeah. have to be only them. Right. We can't, yeah. it's, not, it's a lie if it's only them. We yeah. care about us too. Yeah. But it's a win-win situation. You exactly. know, so that, that guy really sure they want to do it in sale, but they're not pushy salesmen, as they say. They, yeah. They're honest. They can feel their honesty. I feel their integrity. I feel they're, you know, they're really here to make a good deal for all of us, you know. Yes, yes. I, I want to ask you something because I, I, I know uh, you told me you're, you're originally from Lebanon. Um, would you believe then that part of your own emotional intelligence is that nice mix of Oriental and Western cultures? You're, you, know, you brought that to the forefront. Or is it something far beyond that? No. If it wasn't for a health crisis and depression and, and ha- seeing my whole life falling apart, I wouldn't have learned. I would have been excited. Is yes. it in the Middle East? You know, they, they ask me often, do you think there's one culture that is more... Emotional uh, intelligence, yeah. Uh, that's not because all cultures by nature at the moment, they are chauvinist, where the male is more important than the female. Yes. And thus the feminine energy is less important than the... Inter- uh, uh, male energy, the, the masculine energy. Interesting. See, the masculine energy about the energy, we both have both. Yeah. I have, have masculine, which is the energy of doing, acting, thinking, and I have a feminine energy, which is feeling, which is intuition, which is compassion, right? Yes. But because our society is chauvinist, we give value to the male, so we give value to the masculine energy. Interesting. Woman feel. You know, oh, don't cry like a woman. So, so oh, it's intuitive, you know, like, oh, you know. So if what happens is that because we grow up in chauvinistic societies, all yeah. of them are chauvinistic, all religions are chauvinistic, you know. Yeah. So we do not give importance to our feminine side. It's like your brain, the right side and the left side, the masculine side. And that's why they tell you we only use 90% of our brain. Because we use maybe fifty percent, hundred percent of the uh, the left one, which is the yes. thinking, 
but we use very little of our intuition, imagination, and emotions. Yeah. So you end up using 10% of the 50, which is 5, plus 5 is 55, 16, or 40%. Yes. In a, so all cultures, it is, it is not because of the culture or because the family is how much do we, do we value our emotion, feminine energies. Yes. And if some parents can encourage you to be creative, to express your feeling, to cry, and to they hug you, they, see, that gives you, that allows you to be able to express and use your feminine energy more than, than, than normal, yes. other family. So then you'll be more balanced. Yes. So sometimes, yes. that's why I said, we all have to change. And change starts from within. Absolutely. Changing is about balancing what they call the yin and yang, the masculine and the feminine. Yes. So that both brains are working. Yes. Imagine if you are work, walking only on one leg and you're limping, yes. right? It's hard, but you'll get there. Yes. Imagine one day you'll discover you have another leg and you put it down. Yes. Oh my God, I can run, I can walk, it's such as easy. The same thing, imagine if your left brain, if your right brain is working with your life brain. Exactly. Then life will be so much better. So we need to disrupt ourselves. We need to change. Because if we don't disrupt ourselves, something or somebody will disrupt us. A life crisis, a health crisis, a divorce, you know. So yeah. I grew, I, I, I woke up. To my, emo- to my feminine energies, Brilliant. my emotions, and my intuition, and my imagination by being kicked, you know, with the health crisis. Yes, you know? yes, that's amazing. But that's why kids must learn emotional literacy because yeah. they don't need to accumulate so much damage until there's a crisis and everything collapses. You yeah. Know? Well, let's, uh, that's fascinating. Let's take a look at maybe some situations where you – Maybe you are selling or you've seen, you know, sales professionals um, maybe doing something right or maybe making some mistakes and maybe, you know, pick a few of those and kind of relate the story with me just so that people listening in can kind of benefit from what you saw happen. If you can remember one or two examples. Well, one of them we talked about earlier is when I feel pressured when you have to close the sale now and become a the pushy salesman or saleswoman. Exactly. And that really makes people angry. Yes. I mean, usually when I go into a store, I don't want anybody to come to me and ask me if they can help me. Yes. <laughs> I used to be, when I started my life for my, my lighting stores, I was one of those people. Right. If somebody comes in to buy, man, I was so pushy. I was, uh, and you know, and half the time I, the sale wouldn't happen. And yes. here comes my partner. He takes the, another client, pass, comes in. And yeah. my partner, which is more uh, kind of had that noble energy, laid back, relaxed, you know, older than me. And I was like 19, 20, you know, he was like 40. Yeah. He would come there and he closes every deal. Yes. You know, he closes every deal. So the, 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 we need to give that time. And then reading the energy is really important. Yes. You know, that when somebody comes in and know nothing about me, and doesn't care to know anything about me and just want to rip me off. Right. You know, it's like there's no communication. There's no flow. We yes. call it the flow of energy, to live yeah. in the flow. Exactly. So, you know, so to, to be able to read people, to, you know, the thing they do is they don't read people. They just want to close the sale. They, um, and they don't use their intuition. Yes. You know, intuition against the feminine energy, you know. You know, all women, you know, that's, 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 you know you, I use logic and reason, you know. But, you know, intuition is like, you know, they, they can develop that intuition. There are courses and classes and techniques. If you practice them, you'll be able to tell that this guy probably is very angry at his wife or, you know. I mean, not I'm giving a silly example. Yes, right. You know, like, you know, this guy is just really, really angry. You yeah. know, just, you know, maybe if... I, hey, sit down, would like bring you a cup of coffee or, you know, help them balance their energies. Yes. You know, because you can see it hectic. That person now is in a relaxed state, you know, more susceptible, more open to you talking to them, selling them and so on. Yes, that's, that's wonderful, Ayman. 
really appreciate your sharing all of that. And I want to maybe give people uh, uh, an opportunity sort of to catch up with Ayman. And, and uh, I know you've written the new book, uh, Secret Commerce, and you're also doing some exciting projects in the Middle East. Maybe we just spend a few minutes on those. That'd be fantastic if you don't mind. Sure. So uh, if you want to tell us about the, the Secret Commerce book, what kind of inspired your thought process behind it? and what your objective is, uh, and yeah. then you can cover the latest activities. You know, uh, the sacred commerce came from the idea that, I'll back up, the, the book Executive EQ during those years, 20 years ago, and other books along the same time, yeah. started the movement, what they call sustainability, or the three bottom line, you know, profit, planet, and and what is it, profit, planet, and people. Yes. And there's more than one return on investment. There's a return to the community, and there's a return to people. Yes. And uh, I was in Egypt uh, on my honeymoon, and a few guides, tourist guides, yes. came to me and insisted that they take my picture between a big stone uh, with a statue on it. Yes. And I thought they're going to rip me off with my camera. So I said, no, thank you. I don't want anything. Oh, yes. no, no. You need to take your picture here and there. I said, ah, oh, leave me alone. And yes. then when they kept insisting, I spoke in Arabic to them. I said, leave me alone. Yes. I don't have any money. And they got really mad. I said, what do you mean? We don't care about your money. We want to take your picture here. And they yes. were so angry at me. And I'm yes. saying, ah, oh, <laughs> give them the camera. Let them run with it if they want. So we stood, me and my wife, on both sides of the stone. He took the camera, he took the picture, gave me the camera, and left. Yes. What a weird situation. Yeah. And then comes the, the big group that we were in, because we were lost. And the tour guide, which was an Egyptologist, yes. said, why were you late? Where were you? I said, we told him the story. Yeah. He looked at the stone, and it's a statue. And he said, knowing that we are business people, he said, do you know where is this? He said, no. He said, this is God Bess. I said, so? He said, God Bess is the God of the merchant priesthood. I said, merchant priesthood? He said, yes, in Egypt, there were the healing priests, the temple priests, the, the scribe priests, and there were those who were engaged in business and commerce who took business and commerce as their spiritual path. And those high ones were... And then I started digging more and more, and I found out that they... They, are, they were the emotional alchemists. They used emotions a lot. And all of what they worked about is balancing the masculine and feminine energy, even in the marketplace. Yes. And, you know, I, there's so many fascinating techniques they use, like they call drop of joy, how they use joy to ch change emotions from one to another. And it's really fascinating stories. And then I saw how their knowledge when the Egyptian empire or civilization finished, moved to, the, to Moses, to the Hebrew yeah. people who took commerce. That's what they're known as the great business people. Yeah. And then moved to the Knight Templars who built all the economy of Europe all yeah. the way to America. Yes. And how the global citizen, the new millennial, are now coming up saying we cannot depend anymore on our uh, governments, on our financial institution, our United Nations. We need to take responsibility for yes. this new world coming in. And they're all more or less using similar, you know, destructive uh, technologies and models personally and in, in life. So I wrote that book and I created an, a, a training program uh, called The Emotional Alchemist. Yes. Uh, which is a four days training program. And so it's basically about how you can have your business or commerce, yes. is it the commerce between you and, and, and yourself, yes. which we call inner, inner commerce, yes. or the commerce uh, of, sacred commerce is about the commerce of product, information, and services that help in raising consciousness and quality of life. Yes. So, it's yeah. much so more those are, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they did for. They have the fourth bottom line. Yes. Okay, the fourth P, which is yeah. purpose. Purpose, okay. It's not about what is, which is the money, and how I do business, which is the second bottom line. Do yeah. I do it with integrity, character, trust, and so on? Yeah, but why is. am I doing this? What's my purpose? Yes. And the purpose 
like everything we really do is our spiritual growth, is our own evolution, yeah. our own happiness and joy and the ability to be more loving, more understanding, uh, more joy in our life, you know. So they took business as transaction yeah. to change themselves to. Not, it's great to have return on investment and return for the community and return for people. But what about me? Yeah, exactly. What about the big me, the real me, you know? Yeah, exactly. So that's what I tried to, you know, because I believe this is where we're moving to. As in the Absolutely. business, we raise more consciousness around that. We're, and we're missing the purpose. And sometimes we sacrifice our, uh, our purpose, you know, for money or other reasons. And yeah. that's where lots of people have lots of money, but are they happy? Are they, it's know, like you're they... basically saying you need to sort of stop and, and breathe and really think about what you're doing and why you're doing it and, and, yeah. how, wow. and how it's affecting others in the community, in the world at large. Right. Yeah. So out of that, out of that, I created um, a, an incubator uh, tech company in San, yeah. in San Francisco, uh, which have three companies we are launching now. They're all disrupting media and commerce. Yes. There's a new one about commerce that is really unique, which is, you know how in our reality we have retail stores, owned by your cousin on the high street selling fashion there. Yes. And then franchises. And then we have big stores, mega stores like Costco and so on. Yes. And then we have the home businesses, the multi-levels, the, right, the home businesses. Exactly. And the big stores have moved to the internet with places like Amazon, right? That's the translation. Yes. But nobody translated the franchises into e-franchises yes. or the personal stores into online stores. Yes. Yes. We have Shopify, but you have only if you sell your own product. But yes. how we can create a franchise that sells unique product and how we can sell thousands of those stores. Yes. So we are creating a, I have a company which is called the Whole Life Expo and Conferences, yes. which have access to tens of thousands of those vendors of sacred commerce, of you know, yoga product, education product, uh, health and vitamin product, uh, and on and on and on. Even yes. green building, green material, everything about the quality of life and raising consciousness. Yes. So we, we, we create many stores, many franchises, one called the Eco Fashionista, which is eco fashion yes. for ladies, right? Uh, all, right. So they take those stores yes. and they slap them on their Facebook page. And they sell to their friend and community. Yes. And they make 5% of all sales and they don't do nothing. All what they have to do is just take the store. Everything is done. Yes. And another one for personal stores. I don't want to share too many of the ideas. We're working yes. on them. But yes. they are really yes. a, a fantastic new way. Um, so it's, it's basically empowering people to take their commerce back from big corporations. Yes, yes. Everybody is telling and all word of mouth, it's all word of mouth. I call it instead of multi-level, on the level marketing. Yes. You know, we right. level with people and, and horizontal instead of being vertical. Yes. And, and the same thing with, me, with, the, with the media. Uh, we came with a, a new, instead of selling a, 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 a live stream or a channel or a, an ebook, we have created a, we help people expert practitioners, uh, in, uh, visionary entrepreneurs, to, we offer them to create their own unique media and commerce company, platform. Okay. So basically they create a business page and they drag and drop into their business page Yes. A community, small mini community or group. They can put in a TV channel. They can broadcast live. They can sell tickets. They can have stores. They, and all of those tours are embeddable everywhere and on Facebook. Yeah. So you know, oh. so it's like sitting on the spaceship. Yeah. And here's one. You know, I've got everything I need. Yeah. All the services from editors to cover design people to, you know, to technology services. On one side, we've got all the apps. You drag and drop all the apps, create yeah. your own, you know, spaceship, viral yeah. spaceship. And we don't have to come to us. We, we go everywhere where the eyeballs are instead exactly. of people coming to your site. Exactly. Yeah. 
And another one, which is a, the last one, is a publishing company, a new way to experience books. Yeah. It's moving books from reading books to experiencing books. It's a way to do your book in 10 minutes in multimedia. Yes. So you read the book, Sacred Commas, for example, you read a, 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 a page, and then there's me video, you know, talking to you for five minutes. Yes. And then there's another page, and there's the music playing. So I'm talking about Egypt, like the old Egyptian, and Egyptian yes. music playing on the side at the same time. So now it's a multi-sensory experience. Absolutely. You know, the millennial will never read a three, five hundred page book anymore. Exactly. They want everything short, quick, to the point, you know. So we believe that the future of books are smaller books, multimedia, and then we open it, open them up to collaboration if you want. You can open collaboration, then you, you read my book and say, wow, I like the definition of sacred commerce, but yes. I have a better one. You hit on it, you tag it, and then suddenly a box comes up and you send me a message. You say, Ayman, I, what about this definition? Or you might tell Ayman with all your, the history of commerce in your you book, you the forgot author. the Greeks. Yes. Right. So you, you interact with the author, you interact with other people reading the other book. Other readers, yeah. You, you get feedback and information and video, and, and then I can edit the book in five minutes. The book yes. is always changing, growing, you know, with the mind of many, yes. and always stay relevant to the times. And there's many, many other things, but just a quick idea about Sure, sure. And, and we're launching all this in America, and now I'm trying to bring them to Middle East here. And that's exactly where I want us to come back to, because we, when we were getting started, you were telling me about some of the activities you're doing in the Middle East um, around professional development and so on. If you could maybe tell me one more time what, what you're doing there and how. Yeah. Well, you know, having uh, been born here in the Middle East and grew up the first part of my life and living in the West all my life, really, uh, I look at the Middle East like the source of all problems since I was born all over the world coming yes. from there. And, and I, I feel sad for the state of the Arab world, of the Muslim community. Yes. Their religion has been hijacked by extremists. Their, their politics have been hijacked by dictators and, and whatever. Yeah. And there's, there's, the government has been in charge of everything, the education, the, the, yeah. the business. The, yeah. And... Um, Obviously, in the last five years, we saw the Arab Spring collapsing yes. and the rise of ISIS and all kinds of weird wars and civil wars. And, and uh, when they interviewed uh, the prince of Dubai a few months ago, they told him, well, what's, how did you guys end up with all that stuff? You know, like you're destroying the planet with you. All what you know how to export is terrorism and oil. You yeah. know, like, and you guys need something to do and the prince said yes i know we made a big mistake and they said what's the mistake he said we developed our countries we have the biggest airports the biggest airlines the biggest buildings the biggest highways before yes. we developed our people we forgot to yeah. develop our and so, this is the, and even young people that i mentor here and there in the arab world Yes. And I asked him because I was so much for the Arab Spring Revolution. I wanted to help the younger people. And they all told me, forget the revolution. We don't care anymore. So I thought it's because they are too tired and early living, you know. But the reason they told me is that we're not ready yet for revolution. Yes. We need personal development revolution. We need educational revolution. We need personal professional uh, business uh, education. Yes. before we really can ask for a democratic revolution. Yes. Because we saw when we gave democracy, we got all kind of, all this, you know, uh, people with no education yes. taking over, you know. That's right. So and I'm, trying, I'm trying to find here some crazy people like me who are extremely optimistic yes. and who believe that if we can come together, we can create the platform, the tools, mm -hmm especially from an online technology uh, basis, to really help the thousands of amazing teachers, authors, experts, visionaries to yeah. come together in a platform and really offer classes to do multimedia ebooks to support young people, to support each other, to collaborate. You know, they have no way, like in the West, like LinkedIn or this or that, to yes. work together, to support each other, to collaborate together. So that's what I'm hoping to do is probably my, between this and the other incubator, my last hooray before I hopefully 
uh, buy a little Thailand, some island in Thailand, and just yeah. uh, live happily ever after. <laughs> but I do one big thing that which I can give back to my country is my homeland. You know, no, you, you're doing you're doing great. It's amazing how many things you're working on. It's it's fascinating, uh, you know, uh, history and background and insights that you shared with us. And I uh, I'm going to wrap up the the, the interview. Uh, you can definitely stay on the line because I want to wrap up a few other things with you. But I want to tell our audience that we'll definitely share on YouTube this interview. There will be a lot of links on the different initiatives that Ayman is leading and also some of his published works, especially on, on uh, emotional uh, literacy and also his latest book, uh, Sacred Commerce. I want to thank you for listening in and I look forward to seeing you on our next podcast. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Ayman, as well. Really appreciate you being here. Welcome. Welcome. It's fun. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Top 1% Sellers Factory Podcast. Give us your suggestions and guest recommendations by emailing us at ash at connectwithash.com. Thank you also for sharing this podcast with your colleagues and social media contacts. To connect with us on LinkedIn, please send a connect request to ash at connectwithash.com. See you at our next episode. Thanks for tuning in.